Kia ora team, Chris Fahey here, hope you're going awesome. So look, to get the vlog started for the new year, I figured we'd punch it out straight to the suburbs. Now off the back of the Winyard Quarter mini-series, I figured the obvious starting point would be one of the other big transformation projects around the region, being Hobsonville. And so rather than try to bite off the whole Hobsonville in one go, I figured I'd start off with a quick coffee down at Catalina Bay, check out what's going on down there. Now, whenever you talk to people about Hobsonville, the first thing they'll say, well, maybe not the first, but one of the things they'll say is, oh, you can take the ferry to Hobsonville. So we're gonna do that as well. So I'm um, up nice and early, shooting off to the ferry building. So let's get into it. So Catalina Bay is a seaside development at the northeastern tip of the Hobsonville Point development. Hobsonville Point itself is one of the biggest master plan communities in Auckland, having started from a largely blank canvas as part of the Hobsonville airbase. Focusing in on Catalina Bay, its prior history was part of the airbase, with the bay itself used for the servicing of the Catalina flying boats. The Catalina Bay development was set up to provide a seaside hub for the community and alongside the ferry service there's a bunch of eateries, some office spaces and plans for some future development. The development's being undertaken by Willis Bond who's also responsible for the apartment projects down in Winyard Quarter. Projects so far have included the Sunderland Hangar, so this was originally built in 1939 and has been refurbished into a 1500 square metre brewery and a 1000 square metre co-working space called the Hangar. Alongside this, a bunch of the other military buildings like hangars, armory and admin buildings have been refurbished into offices and eateries. Looking forward, the most notable future development is the Catalina Bay Apartments. So Willis Bond's currently taking pre-sales on these apartments with designs ranging from one to three bedrooms for the bulk of the apartments, plus some townhouses and penthouses. They're currently reporting 70% pre-sold and construction due to commence in 2022. All right, team, so I'm down at Fabric Cafe at Catalina Bay. Figured I'd drop a couple of quick reflections. So the first is um, ferry ride out here, all good. I think the ferry service is about every two hours though. So I think as a genuine like commuter transport means, kind of difficult because you definitely have to plan your day around uh, when you're kind of moving backwards and forwards from the city. And there's a pretty short sort of threshold in terms of if you've missed it, uh, you're probably gonna end up going back to your house and driving. Um, they said in terms of what they're doing down here, super cool, I think the apartments will be a real interesting prospect. Um, nice waterfront environment but it's also quite peaceful down here with um, not a huge amount of sort of heavy traffic flying past in terms of boats. Um, so that's pretty cool. I think what they're doing down here in terms of the amenity and sort of setting it up almost as a hut of the community is quite cool with um, a couple of little office buildings, you've got the big bar, you've got the cafe here and then obviously the transport hub and you can see how to a certain extent that um, sort of stepped transport in terms of like the two hour separation between the ferries could actually draw people down here in the morning um, and you get more of a community sense as people wait for the ferry before they then shoot into the city. So kind of interesting but yeah definitely real cool and um, be interesting to see how this develops over the next couple of years particularly as that first big apartment building goes off on the waterfront. One of the cool things that they've done down here in terms of seeding this initial waterfront development is that they've reused a number of the existing buildings. And so the big hangar building, which they've reused, Pressureless Fabric Cafe building was original, um, plus some of the offices' houses up on the hill. And so rather than just going for the scorched earth approach of um, bowling everything and developing shiny new buildings, they've reused these spaces, which I think adds a really nice character to the area. And it's interesting because quite often the development feasibility in terms of reusing existing buildings can be quite tough and people will just look at it and say actually for what it's worth we might as well just develop new. But I think what that does miss is the ability to create that sense of time to an area which is something that you do get from reusing existing buildings. Alright team so we'll wrap up here. 
Uh, from here, what am I doing? I'm basically waiting for my ferry. Um, what I'll actually do is I'll pop up into Hobsonville and just have a bit of a walk around and scout out those neighbourhoods for maybe some future vlogs. Um, with that said, we'll wrap it up here and we'll see you later. See you, bye.